before we get to the movie. Yes. I want to talk about a book. A book! This book, I know you're familiar with it. Yes, it is one of my favorite books about movies. This is about the five Best Picture nominees of 1968 and how they changed and reflected change in the movie industry. Mark Harris does a really good job of weaving these five subjects together in a cohesive narrative. You d you never get that sense of kind of narrative whiplash when he switches from subject to subject like you do say in The Devil in the White City. My main takeaway from this book yes? is I am obsessed with watching Dr. Doolittle. I have to see it. <laughs> I have to see if the toxic atmosphere of the set makes it onto the screen. That book convinced me never to work with Rex Harrison. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. I know, he's pretty dead. Even though the author himself has said, don't watch Dr. Doolittle, mm -hmm. I have to. We're not going to do it tonight, are we? No, it's nearly three hours long. It's not going to happen on this show. Plus, I want to keep it for myself. I want you to keep it for yourself, too. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good, it might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. When I look out my window, many sights to see. But when I look in my window, so many different people to be. Oh no! Oh no! It must be the season of the witch. Yeah! Released in 2011, SOTW stars basement alum Nicolas Cage. Claire Foy in her feature film debut. The Queen! Finally making his second appearance on this show after 10 years, Basement Hall of Famer and America's Caveman, Ron, Ron Perlman. Perlman! And making his seventh appearance on our show, Hall of Famer Christopher Lee! Christopher Lee! He is unstoppable, like some sort of undead monster. This was directed by Dominic Cena, who had previously directed Cage in Gone in 60 Seconds. Okay. Critics were not kind. To season of the witch. Tom Huddleston of Time Out London had this to say, despite its admirably straight face, season of the witch is a silly romp through Pythonesque medieval cliche and knockabout hammer horror with a dash of cut price Tolkien chucked in to keep things moving. Can yeah. you tell he's English? <laughs> you know, I'm going to look forward to this one. I'll probably mistake that mistake later on because I read an interview with Ron Perlman after this came out and he's like, it's fun to make movies. Yeah. It was fun to wear a sword and leather and, and run around with Nicolas Cage. So let's have fun, Matt. This DVD was sent to us by a generous viewer along with a whole lot of other Nicolas Cage DVDs. The person sent us their entire collection. And we'll be talking about some more of those DVDs later in the show. Easter is right around the corner, and so your gift is a little pagan ritual that any witch would appreciate. Pause! for dipping my eggs into. The practice of coloring Easter eggs comes from a pagan festival celebrating Estra, a goddess of spring and renewal. And if you've always wondered where the word estrogen comes from, now you know. Legend has it that Estra revived a dying bird and turned it into an egg-laying rabbit, who in turn gifted her with colorful eggs. That only makes sense. Have you colored Easter eggs with Lorenzo yet? Yeah, yeah, we did it last year, maybe the year before too. It's, uh, you know, like all things, it's a little bit more frustrating in real life than in your imagination. <laughs> I'm finally doing it. I'm coloring Easter eggs. And you're like, did my mom get this mad? <laughs> Strap on your broadsword and your leather jerkin and journey perilously over to the old leather couch where we will be enduring Season of the Witch. What hawk? Thanks. That hit me in the breast. I'm enjoying the fact that I have a mouth. Look at you eating snacks like the world is a normal place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Atlas Entertainment. I prefer Monkey Business Institute Entertainment. <laughs> that's, that's a joke aimed straight at the cutting room floor. <laughs> a group of ladies are being manhandled with ropes. They are accused of witchcraft by this man. I know your witches because Bible. The ladies are killed by hanging. We can't just leave them there. There's more spells I have to say or else they might come back. These people are dead. We're done here. I was the hound on Game of Thrones. That night, the priest hauls them all up and he gets out the book of religious spells. And bad things start to happen because he's too slow because he didn't have any help. The monk is eventually killed. Meanwhile, the crusades are going on and there are two knights. There he is. There he is. And they're... 
he is. <laughs> there they are. Here we are. Bayman and Felson. They're the best of buddies, and they're always making these little jokes about drinks. But if we divide them evenly, who will buy tonight's drinks? Oh, you're buying, my friend. Ha ha ha! George! They fight! I'm building up a powerful thirst, Bayman! And then they drink. There are all kinds of battles that these guys go to. Battle after battle. And bros. I'm bros. No, we're bros, man. <laughs> but they don't care, because afterwards they get to have a fun time. This time you're buying the apps as well as the drinks. I want potato skins. Eventually they get to the siege of Smyrna. Bayman stabs a woman who he knows is an innocent. How'd she get stabbed? How'd she get stabbed? You call this glorious? Murdering women and children? Know your place, knight. Yeah, I'm just to the left and the right of the king and queen on the board. I know my place. <laughs> they desert and head back to Europe. We've been walking all day and haven't passed a soul. Keep your souls. Let me find a chicken. Give me the chicken! <laughs> they find this house. Hello? Chicken? Well, this bed's too hard. I'm gonna try another bed. Oh, this one's too soft. Oh, this one's just right. <laughs> they find all these dead people in the bed. Really big booboos all over the faces. The town is stricken with the plague. Bring out you... Oh, never mind. You know what to do. They have to keep a low profile, because if anyone finds out that they're deserters from the Crusades, they'll be in trouble. That's exactly what happens. They're set upon by the guards of the town. There's a brief fight, and they're disarmed, and they're taken to see Cardinal Dambroy's... He's got an ugly face because he's been stricken by the plague. Christopher Lee, more like Christopher Yee. I need someone to do a job for me. There's a witch in town. Causing this plague. The witch must be taken to the Abbey of Severac. Cage says, uh, I don't want to do it. Cage. Bayman says, Sorry, we turned our back on the church. All right, see you later. They get put in the dungeon. And they see that supposed black witch. She just looks like a normal girl. This woman needs their help. I want to take her to Cesarac so I can make sure that she gets a fair trial. The distance is nearly 400 leagues. That's roughly six days travel. Nerd! There was a medieval version of Revenge of the Nerds called Revenge of the Scribes. <laughs> they find this guy in the stocks. His name is Hagamar. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Hey, hey, how you doing, hey? He's a guide and can take them where they're going. The witch is unconscious. She was given a powerful sedative in her food last night. Sedative? Who's that? The witch. Witch? The hooch? Nobody said anything about a witch. A watch? They get her in the cage. They're on their way. They fell for it. <laughs> the cardinal dies, and then there's a meaningless shot of this young man. And who are you? And where are you? And why are you? <laughs> what? That was such a weird shot. And these other guys come along, a priest named Balzac, and Eckhart, this fellow. She's stronger than she looks. She also has more wisdom, constitution, and charisma than she looks. You know we're being followed. Hi! That person is Kai. He was an altar boy for the Cardinal, and he wants to be a knight, and can I come along for the ride? That night at the campfire... I brought you some food. We uh, just had these leftovers from Newts and Bats. I hope you can't do anything with those. Who's to guard the wagon? The girl is caged. And so is this movie. But that witch has tricks. <laughs> Give me that key! Stabity stab right in the hand, gets out of the cage and runs off into the woods. They follow her to this village. They find this mass grave full of plague victims. Gross. It's not snossages, but it'll do. Eckhart is certain that he sees his daughter. Kai accidentally stabs Eckhart and kills him the next day. Would anyone care to offer some words? Banana, wagon wheel, uh... What is it now, for instance? Pork, pork. She gets inside your mind and makes you do things. That's what happened with Eckhart. Eckhart was thinking about his daughter and she exploited that. Crusader. I prefer the term crusadist. Allow me to ease your pain. I got that good juju. Remember this, it was not your fault. Oh, don't give him that goodwill hunting bullcrap. They come up to a rickety bridge. And it's got frayed ropes. There's holes in the wood. All of the things that make for a tense scene in a movie. Bayman's like, let's talk more rock. Let's cross this thing. See you around, sucker. Desertion complete. There you go, Felson. 
Booyah. Deeds, not words. The <laughs> motto of Megaforce. That's right. Then he has a plan to get the wagon across the bridge. It will be on my count of three. Oh, I hope he does that funny one, two, two and a half. That is funny. That's classic funny counting. The bridge rickety rackety rickety rackety. If you let me out, it'll be lighter. I'm Claire Foy, notorious lard ass. <laughs> They get across the bridge right before it collapses. That was a little too close. I've saved your ass a hundred times. But no one could ever save your face. Oh, sick burn. What's on the other side of that bridge? Wormwood Forest. Wormwood Forest! Damn fart. Damn fart. They talk to the witch, who at this point, it's clear she's a witch. Mm, that makes the witch fall right asleep. <laughs> That's when, right. <laughs> when you cover up their cages. What's that noise? Wolves. They're coming for you, Bayman. They kill a lot of wolves. Someone gets, oh, Hagamar. Hagamar, Hagamar, Hagamar. Hagamar bites it by being bitten. What did the wolves say when they finished eating Hagamar? <laughs> Hagamar? <laughs> a benevolent god will not ask such things of men! There we go! That's the cage that we want to see. The great monastery of Severac is right there. Felsen says, hey, when this is all over, I want to go back to the valley I was raised in and just see it one more time before I die. Where are the monks? Chapel. At this time, they should be in Vespers. They're on Vespers. <laughs> all of the priests have died from the Black Plague. Corpses covered with those big boo-boos. Go look at the book. Go look at the book. Oh, it's the Book of Solomon. The ancient lore. It's how you deal with eldritch abominations. All right, witchy poo. I have deceived you. Speak the truth now before God. The truth. The truth. The truth is on fire. This is no witch. There's a demon in her. I need this exorcism. Enough of this crap. I'm getting out of here. Don't say those magic words at me. She gets out. This is the hammer horror chicanery that the reviewer talked about. Not the Python-esque bumble rot or the <laughs> Tolkien chuckings. She could have escaped the entire time. Why didn't she? She wanted to get into the monastery because we had to bring her in. She wants the book. If the book were to fall into the demon's hands, we would face an endless darkness. Yeah! You know what I call that torch? A cage match. Little demons go inside the corpses of the monks and reanimate them. Now the demon has an army of the dead. Balzac is trying to say the banishment spell to get rid of the demon. Felsen is stabbed. Shouldn't have talked about your valley. <laughs> the demon kills Balzac. I destroyed the others. This is the last one. This exact same scene happened in Raising Arizona. <laughs> Felsen isn't dead. You'll be buying tonight, my friend. And I'm in the mood for a nice juicy IPA. And the demon finally kills him. Felsen's definitely dead. You have achieved your quest for fire. Pearlman! <laughs> but Kai has that book and he can read Latin. And he starts continuing the spell. Bayman gets stabbed a lot by the wings of the demon. Kai finishes the spell and the demon is banished. That's how you get burned! <laughs> but Bayman is mortally wounded. Okay, Bayman's Gotta Die movie. Don't give us some BS about a healing spell in the Book of Solomon or anything like that. The girl is no longer a demon now. They bury the three adventurers. And he goes off with the girl. Whew! Lucky we saved that book. And that concludes the season of The Witch. Do you think any time a director approaches a composer and says, I'd like you to compose music for my film, and the composer says, all right, tell me more. Well, it's a fantasy film. Let me stop you right there. I got it. Before we get started, Tona, if you don't mind, bring out a little bit of this. Yes. Cheers to evil. Season of the Witch. There was so much on the line. The fate of the world. Demons were about to destroy everything. The twist where you think she's a witch, but actually she's possessed by a demon. Yeah. The demon has been perpetuating this basically a heist the entire time trying to break into this monastery none of these things felt like anything in the movie if i was told the plot of this movie i'd be like 
yeah, yeah, that's really fun. But it's not fun. The worst part of it is that there's no attempt at any sort of period authenticity in the performances or in the dialogue. Obviously, you look at Nicolas Cage in this and you think, well, he was miscast, but I think he was more convincing as a medieval knight than Ron Perlman. Both him and Cage seem to be sleepwalking. Cage is not a lazy actor. No, he's not. I mean, he, he attacks every role. He does not attack this one. Which is sad because he is the should be the emotional center of the movie. A, a, a guy who's done many bad things and wants to do one good one. And you never get the sense that he has that inner turmoil or that torture. I no. mean, he, he says it a few times mm -hmm. and he scowls a lot at memories, but yeah. that's not enough. You know what I hate? Book burning scenes... I don't care if it's like we're burning the evil library. I hate watching books burn. It just there's a lot. Okay, Lovecraft. I was talking about the ne Necronomicon. There's only five copies left. Mm -hmm. And it seems like in every Lovecraft story, it ends with a house burning down and the cursed book is destroyed. And I always think, God, now there's only four. <laughs> Another problem with the movie. We have this party of adventurers. Now, mm -hmm. if you look at any D&D &D party in any Dungeons and Dragons campaign, each member has a role to play. Yes. But all of these guys, who's Eckhart? Mm-hmm. Hagamar, he's supposed to be a guide, but he never does anything before yeah. he's killed by wolves. <laughs> and we don't get the sense that these people are here for any reason. There's not even a distinction between Bayman and Felsen. Like, they're yeah. both basically the same guy, except yeah. one guy wisecracks a little more. Mm -hmm. Here is the core problem of the movie. Other than the fact that it does not communicate its peril nearly well enough. It starts with... Three witches being hung. And we're supposed to understand that it's a good thing that the witches are being hung. Which is how we are not raised. Right. Unless you're extremely evangelical Christian. Witches aren't a thing. They're just the weird women in town. We've all read The Crucible. Even though we see two of them come back to life, they should have really been like, no, we're serious here. These are witches, and they have to be destroyed because they bring evil onto the world. The script seemed very dashed off. Someone was handed a treatment and told, give me a script in three days. Because there's a weird tax code thing in Hungary that we need to start filming next week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I do like that they all died. That is an asset of the movie. You don't normally see that. Normally it would be Cage riding off with the girl. Yeah. It's fun stuff. And if I were to catch it on TV, I'd watch it again. This is the type of movie that I would catch when I'm home for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I'd watch it and I would think, that was pretty good because it wasn't eight episodes of The Big Bang Theory all in a row. <laughs> Which always seems to be playing when I go home for the holidays. It's nothing but The Big Bang Theory. I've never seen an episode of that show. This is the experience of watching The Big Bang Theory. That was a pretty good joke. That was a pretty good joke. Well, that was a good joke. But you never laugh. Well, I've had just about enough of the season of The Witch, and now it's time for Seen It. Our theme for Seen It is Nicolas Cage movies, and we were sent a whole big box load of them by one of our viewers. We're going to talk about four of them. Red Rock West. Seen It. Seen It. That is a very difficult movie title for me to say, because I either say Red Rock Rest or Red Rock West. Red Rock West. It is It is a tarred, a tarred one. <laughs> I can't pronounce H's. I always say my H's as T's. The 90s were the golden age of the neo-noir. Mm -hmm. we got Fargo. We've got Twin Peaks. The Ice Harvest. A Simple Plan. Red Rock West. I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Red Rock West might be the most by-the-books movie ever made. <laughs> and that makes it wonderful. Drifter shows up in a town. It's confused for a hitman. Hired to kill a woman. He doesn't do it. Warns her instead. Now everyone he's ever talked to in this town needs to kill Nicolas Cage. I have to say I thought the ending was pretty dumb. The ending doesn't matter at all. I felt yeah. like the movie was a continuously accelerating automobile. And by the time it got to the end, it ran off the road and crashed. <laughs> the Weatherman. Seen it. Not seen it. Good. Good for you. <laughs> This movie is so bad that when I got to the end of it, I was mad. I was mad at the movie and how bad it was. It's uh, Cage plays this irredeemable jerk who's also a hopeless imbecile. And when you've got those two qualities in your leading man, do you think he's going to have any other qualities that are <laughs> likable in any way? No, he doesn't. And he's trying to accomplish something. Something that normally an audience would maybe... Be invested in his success or failure, but you're not because you hate the weatherman so much. Michael Caine is in this. 
poor fella. He has to say this stupid monologue about camel toe. Yeah, that's the right expression. <laughs> I am tempted not to take this to the thrift store, but to the dumpster outside my house. Vampire's Kiss. Seen it. I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! Seen it. Holy God. Nicolas Cage in this movie is unlike anything I've seen before. I don't want to resort to hyperbole, but his performance for the last 40 or 45 minutes of this movie might be the greatest film performance of all time. Nobody has ever done what he did, and I don't think anyone could, except possibly Kinski. Except Kinski couldn't have played the early part of the movie as yuppie businessman. Nicolas Cage is trying to do this kind of, you know, socialite accent, and it doesn't seem quite right, but it merges perfectly into the point later in the movie when he realizes that he's a vampire, though he's not. So his voice has finally become a vampire. <laughs> and when he becomes a vampire, it's both terrifying and hysterical. And if you put this next to Raising Arizona and Moonstruck, you can line those up against the three best comedies of Bill Murray or Eddie Murphy from the 1980s. Nicolas Cage was the secret best comedic actor of the age. It's like you've watched the first hour of the movie of a guy saying, I'm going to lift up a house, a two-story house. And you're like, you're not lifting up a house. And then, oh my God, that guy just lifted up a two-story house. That's how impossible this role feels. Next up, we have Wild at Heart. Seen it. We got some singing to do. I had seen Blue Velvet, and so David Lynch was basically like the messiah for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at, in, in 1990. Me too, yeah. And I went to see Wild at Heart. And I went with some friends. And throughout the movie, they were just howling with laughter. And I got so mad at them. How dare you laugh at this important movie? And watching it again years later, they were right. It's a comedy. It's a comedy <laughs> melodrama. Now, David Lynch doing comedy, it's going to be like Jim Jarmusch doing comedy. It's mm -hmm. unlike comedy you've ever seen before. It's going to be surreal. It's going to be bizarre. It's going to be occasionally not funny. It's going to be something that one time you watch it and you're like, what the hell is this? And then the next time you watch it, you're know, like, this is this is hysterical. Sailor Ripley, in the movie, he's talking to Laura Dern and he says, I had a boner with a capital O. <laughs> That's David Lynch's version of a joke. And it is funny. Yeah, it is. But it doesn't resemble jokes as we know them. How unsexy Laura Dern looks when she's talking about how she's like you gotta give me back to the motel right now because i'm as hot as georgia asphalt and you're like that's supposed to not be sexy right yeah you want to go somewhere don't go to the crusades don't go to Severac. don't go to styria go to our website welcome to the basement show.com all of our episodes are there you can watch them all plus there are paypal donation buttons that you can click on to donate to help support this show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation don't believe us? We have the name of someone who's done this. Brian, who says, My friend Chris introduced me to you guys back in 2009. We would continue to enjoy your channel through our college career and beyond, watching with each other and new friends. Chris's newest inductee is his fiancée, Mary, so please give a thumb kiss to the man who deserves all the happiness in the world. Oh, Chris, for the first time in months, authentic thumb kiss. Mwah! And for providing over a decade of quality entertainment, give a thumb kiss to yourselves, you talented mooks. And if you want to see us open our mail, and we got a big stack of it right here, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. I dare ya. Thank you for catching Season of the Witch with us, and now watch this. Okay. And within a fortnight of her arrival, the plague had swept over us. How long is a fortnight? It's... Is it two weeks? Two weeks, yeah. Fourteen nights. Oh! Yeah. I never knew this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Season of the Witch. And you've been to England. I have, twice. You'll be buying tonight, my friend.